The Aviation Africa Summit and Exhibition has returned. And it is not only back, it is back with a bumper edition of a show that last opened its doors in early 2020, when it was held in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. This highlights program is brought to you by Embraer Commercial Aircraft. Held here at the Kigali Convention Center, here in the Rwandan capital, Kigali, the numbers for the sixth Aviation Africa speak for themselves. There are 1,100 delegates here from 84 countries. There are 15 air chiefs, the DGs from civil aviation authorities around Africa. There's 26 of them. And there are senior executives from 52 airlines. With 100 exhibitors from across the aviation supply chain, Aviation Africa demonstrated how it is becoming the premier aviation event for the African continent. The event was opened by guest of honour Rwandan President Paul Kagame, who stressed the importance of air transport to his country. With an expanding flag carrier Rwandair and the new Bugasera International Airport playing vital roles in establishing Kigali as a regional hub for passengers and cargo. Rwanda is one of the countries in Africa that has not only recovered in terms of traffic from the damage caused by the pandemic, but has grown above 2019 levels. Rwanda is doing this in collaboration with the government of Qatar and Qatar Airways, its key partner. And this is where we want to create an airport and an airline that will do service, not only to one country, but to the entire African family. On the chief executive panel, African airline bosses explained the strategies they are adopting to bring their businesses into the black as they rebuild. Kenya Airways is talking with South African Airways about creating a pan-African airline. We had signed an agreement with uh, South African as a state, and the two airlines, South African and Kenya Airways, are anchor airlines for what we're calling a pan-African airline group. Uh, we have three stages um, to get this dream come true, to make this dream come true. Uh, the first stage, we call it phase one, is to work closer together as uh, two airlines. And this, and this uh, stage includes things like cooperation, uh, co-chairs, which we've already done, having joint um, uh, offices, uh, working together, training opportunities and so on. Then phase two is to look at regulatory clearance so that we can continue working even closer together, for example, anti-competition laws and antitrust laws. And then the last stage is really forming the Pan-African Airline Group. The relaunched Uganda Airlines is using this time to revisit its business model. We had to go back to the drawing board and look at our roots again and ask ourselves, where do we want to go? and how do we want to go to these places? So we had to redo feasibility studies to understand the different travel patterns, understand the different traffic movements in all these countries. And the opportunity is immense, especially in cargo as well as in passenger. One of the highlights of the show is the debut of Embraer's E195 E2, which was on display at Kigali's International Airport. The E195 is one of five in service with Nigeria's Air Peace. The E195 is proving a popular aircraft choice in Africa. Yeah, I think like no other region, Africa is the perfect uh, region for the EJETs. Uh, if you look at just the simple um, connections that we have here in Africa, uh, more than 80% of those connections actually fly aircraft up to 150 seats today. And if you look at new markets, then it's even a higher percentage of around 90-95%. Aviation Africa also saw a host of signings with partnership agreements between various organisations, such as Flight Safety Foundation with AFRA and another with Kenya's CAA, Boeing with AviAssist and finally JamboJet with Han Air. So that's a wrap from a buzzing Aviation Africa 2022. And next year, the event moves to Nigeria. But for now, it's been the fantastic Rwandan hospitality that has made this edition so successful, showcasing Africa's aviation industry as it transforms, as it rebuilds and as it recovers.